In this video, I'm going to be discussing with you two quakes, specifically the Madrid and the West Coast, which have been prophesied and even scientifically predicted to come. They're not far off, folks. We're also going to be talking about prophets, people that we deem to be prophets, John Paul Jackson, David Wilkerson, William Branham, and even Danny Davis by the time this video is said and done. You're not going to want to go anywhere. Before I get started, there are two announcements at the end of the video along with a final prophecy, another revelation at the very end of the video. After my announcements, you're not going to want to miss those. Those announcements are, first off, the status of my cancer. What did the scans reveal, you know, regarding the cancer? And how did the offerings go? Are we still going to be here next month? Did it work out? That kind of thing. You're not going to want to miss those announcements, much less the revelation that you haven't heard anywhere else, folks. I'm telling you, you haven't heard it anywhere else, I promise you, at the very, very end of the video. So let's begin. A word of warning, folks. Take what you hear prayerfully. Don't, don't overreact. This is going to be some horrific things you're going to hear in this video, and I acknowledge that. They are the Word of God. They will be from prophets, people that we deem to be prophets. I mentioned to you David Wilkerson, John Paul Jackson, William Branham, and by the end, Danny Davis. Okay? These are people that are powerful. So, so it's not just going to be things you've heard from me that I've said. We're going to put all this together. But my point is, please pray about everything you're hearing. Don't, don't overdo what I'm saying. Don't underdo what I'm saying. You know, just have a level head. Don't operate off a of spirit of fear. So let's let's start. Um, I said videos ago. I mentioned several times. I heard John Paul Jackson talking about that the Madrid would go first before the West Coast. I didn't remember where I'd heard that. Uh, I thought it was relevant, and and it is relevant if you're looking for signs to come. I found. I stumbled across that video. I found where he said it. Earthquakes will begin to strike not only coastal areas. But even the Midwest will experience a devastating one. In fact, the Midwest may experience one before any coastal city does. I also found it fascinating, interesting, because I believe that video was done in 2008, if I'm correct. In that same video, he's mentioning the Ukraine. Russia is going to try to enhance this escalation of, of tensions by creating an oil crisis. They're going to end up taking or try to take control of the Ukraine and they will continue to arm Iran with weapons to further ignite an oil crisis because conflict is the goal. I'm going to draw something for you. I'm probably going to fast forward so you don't have to sit and watch me do it. And can you see this? <laughs> this don't please don't pick on me. This is not about being artistic. This is about conveying a message. All right. This is my beautiful rendition of the Mississippi. Great Lakes, United States, Pacific, Gulf, Atlantic. Okay. If you can believe John Paul's prophecy, I want again. I want to reiterate. Listen, folks, John Paul Jackson was the first, and you, must, you could do your research. He was the first to say, to prophesy, in fact, in great detail, that the Madrid was going to go. No, no, I, I saw this, this strange headline. It said, The Great Divide, the new normal on the Mississippi River. And something... It's like this was a headline after an earthquake. So a little while after an earthquake had happened, and they were no longer able to go all the way up the Mississippi from New Orleans, all the way up the Mississippi. They weren't able to any longer. Somehow something happened with the river in an, in an earthquake. And so they call it the Great Divide and how business was now operating on the Mississippi River since they could not traverse the whole the whole way up he also said that the mississippi river which is basically the madrid 
is going to run backwards. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's John Paul. He was the first to say it. Somebody can prove me wrong if, 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 if they know something that I don't. He was the first to say it. And may I say, yeah, you know, there's, there's plenty out there saying it now. And I believe there's been a couple credible people that I deem to be prophetic. I believe uh, John Kilpatrick had a, had a, a, a dream. John, April 2008, yes. you had a dream. What did God show you? It was a very stirring dream. I never had one that real before. When I woke up, it stirred me to the point that I asked my wife to hold me, and I'm, you know, a grown man, and I've never done that ever before with a dream of any kind. But I dreamed of an earthquake that took place. It, it, showed, it was shown to me in several stages, and I won't go through the details of it. But um, uh, the Lord showed me that an earthquake was going to hit in the middle part of the country, right where the New Madrid Fault is. And it was so real that it, when the Lord showed it to me that I'd walk by the television set for several days after that. And I, in my mind, I couldn't understand why it wasn't on television. I, I, I can understand that. That's how real it was. But the Lord was showing me, I believe, that if we continue to fool with Jerusalem and, and our Secretary of State and our President keeps putting pressure on Israel to give up land and to give up Jerusalem for peace, I believe that a major earthquake is going to strike America. So what you're saying is, if we pressure Israel to divide up their land, our land will be divided. I believe that with all my heart. I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced of it. It's going to become the Great Divide, okay? I'm also going to, during this, at some point during this video, I'm going to show you credible scientific drawings, or at least people that believe they understand fault lines and what the United States will look like after the Madrid goes and after the West Coast goes. If they were both to go, what would the United States look like? You know, there are, there are renderings out there of what people believe it will look like. Having nothing to do with prophecy. Let's get that straight right now. Having said that, right now there are some of you that live, I know, that live on the Mississippi. That are, that are living along the Madrid. I have said, I believe, in a previous video that I did earlier this year. Recently, the Mississippi flooded. It was bad. Those of you that followed the news, you saw lives devastated. Homes were destroyed. I also believe that the majority of us are aware that God can speak through the elements of this earth to talk to humanity. I'd ask you to pray about it, specifically if you live on the Mississippi. Was God attempting to warn you of what's to come? There are people right now that are watching this video that don't believe in any of this. I know there are some of you that don't believe in any of this. You're just, well, I don't even know why you're not on this channel or watching this. But there are others of you that believe this, but you don't believe it's going to happen in your lifetime. And then yet there's others that believe it's right around the corner or that you're going to see it. I can, and it is regrettable that I cannot say of a certainty that there's going to be a sign before the Madrid hits, even though I believe we just had a warning. I believe, I believe the Mississippi got a warning. But listen to me. For those of you, the last two groups that believe it'll happen in your lifetime, you're going to see it, and those that believe it's going to happen, but you're not going to see it in your lifetime, there are things I think, I hope, and I pray that you're going to get to see as a warning. And when you see these things, Know that you're in that time frame. You're in that time frame that I have been saying is on the horizon. That you're there. That these things are right around the corner. Then the second phase of the dream, I saw the man dressed in black again take the rest of the $50 bill, and this time he tore it right in half. And when he did, an earthquake happened under my feet. And another person walked up to me and handed me a headline which read, quote, Israeli and Palestinian two-state solution reached, unquote. Another headline was handed to me by another person which read, quote, major earthquake hits the middle of the U.S., unquote. Then he tore the bill in half, which seemed to say, if the United States supports a two-state um, solution to divide the nation of Israel or divide Jerusalem that God would allow an earthquake to hit the middle of the United States because that's the land of Israel and God has restored and he has future promises for the natural seed of Abraham and so 
we don't want to see. I think some of this could be conditional, but we don't have to do that and support the two-state solution. But I do think this will happen if we do. And so I pray for our leaders that we do not support this. I don't want you taking that with a grain of salt, folks. I'm telling you, when you start seeing these things happen, know that, that it is time to start praying about what you would do. You want to know the eagle wings that are going to be carrying the Jewish residents out? We've already seen the eagle wings attempting to carry Americans and Afghanistans out. And who's been doing the takeover? Who do you think is going to take over? We're going to discuss this in a minute. We are getting to witness right now exactly what's going to happen with Israel right now. This is, I mean, if you want to call this a sign, for lack of a better, for a lack of a better word, you're getting a sign right now of where this is going. Trump ain't coming back, folks. Jerusalem is going to be attacked, sorely attacked, severely attacked. It's going to be so devastating. This is not going to be anything like Israel has ever known in modern history. In fact, it's going to be so bad, and here's the word, she's going to be removed from her land. And I know you're hearing other things from other people. Now they are going to be removed from their land. They are going to be killed, pillaged, raped, sold, and exiled. That's a word. Now, I'm also going to tell you the next one. And here's where it brings me back to the first one. Our president is going, our administration is going to turn their back on Israel. We're going to turn our back on. Where we could go in and repel the enemy, we turn our back. And then, that's, that's prophecy number three. We turn, our, our president turns her back on Israel, and we don't help them. And i got to tell you, that makes us guilty of sin. You, when you could have done something and you do nothing, I mean, it's like the watchman on the wall that has been able to warn Israel. All he has to do is just warn. We could do a whole lot more than warn. We don't even do anything. We, we help them, and, we, and, and I think we take some into refuge, but, but, but the goal is to let them get out of land, and then the land is just simply fought over. Israel's removed from land. Now, here's what brings it back to number one, and here's where I start getting involved. What president does this? I put this, I actually went on onto YouTube in October 2016. There was no roadmap for the Jewish residents to be exiled. And there's more to that, folks. It's going to get a lot worse than that. Think Islamic type tactics used upon Israel and Jerusalem, the residents of Jerusalem. Yes. Think death. I don't want to say some of the stuff. Think slavery. And, and far worse to the, to the kids and the, and, and the women. But the Jewish residents are going to be exiled, thrown out, folks. And when I wrote this, and God gave this to me, there was no roadmap for any of this. Now, what happened months later after I put that prophecy on YouTube, we had the roadmap as Obama left office. He had the United Nations UN Resolution 2334 was signed. It is now international law. And what does it say? It is the green light. For the international community, Trump's the only one stopping it right now. If there was no Trump, you can only imagine how it would be enforced. And they would love to have Jerusalem. Because here's what happened. UN Resolution 2334, which Obama orchestrated, we abstained from the vote. Here's what he did. All settlements after 1967, according to the law, are a fragrant violation of international law. They are back to pre-1967 borders. Jerusalem is an occupied territory, according to UN Resolution 2334. Point is this. Now we have the roadmap. But when I wrote this, there was no roadmap. I'm going to go back. I believe now it's been about 18 years. I spoke on the channel about a prophecy about a God dream. And let me be real quick with this. When God gives me a, uh, one of his dreams, they are very short and concise and to the point. There's not any mistaking what the message means. It's simply a... a, a segment of something that that really th knocks your socks off here are the details you've heard some of this before but i'm going to make it make sense this time i'm going to show you how it works i told you of a god dream that i had when i was on the west coast i'm above the city and i'm watching the city sink i said this several videos ago i'm watching the city sink and i didn't understand the science behind why i'm looking at the this big 
uh, I guess, uh, water funnel is going. Now, this is a city, so I'm going fast. It, it's going slow, folks. Okay, so it's going slow on the outer edges. And it's, I believe it was going faster on the inside, but it's going real slow on the outside. So I'm, I'm not doing this justice. There's a water funnel. I'm watching the city go under. I didn't understand why there's even a water funnel. Generally, in my mind, I think most people think, well, if, if uh, something sinks, you're going to watch the water go like that. And, you know, it just settles down. I didn't, I didn't process this properly until later. Realizing if you're looking at a city sink, it's, it's broken off. It's literally broken off unless the whole thing's going, unless the whole United States is going. This city broke off. What are you going to have, folks, down there if something's breaking off? Especially on the fault, the, on the fault lines. There's the San Andreas goes all the way, which we'll just get to in a second. What's going to happen? You're going to have, you're going to have if one, if one side, if one side is caving in, you're going to have a fissure, or fissures, right? And or even high spots. If, like, say you have a mountain or whatever in a certain area, that mountain, the last thing that goes, also going to create a, a funnel, a water type funnel. But fissures, especially where water and the sea is going to begin to, if this baby separates and, and splits you, you can see it in your sink you can see it in, in your tub you watch you watch the water go down into the drain and you got yourself a water funnel going that's what I saw now 18 years ago I didn't I didn't understand the graph or at least I didn't understand the quake back then as I do now okay I didn't get it keep that in your mind now let's go forward to uh, last year now, it's, ha it's happened since then, but last year, what's happening, I believe, was the beginning of the year. I don't quite remember exactly, other than to say the beginning of the year, maybe mid, right around there, I had a God dream. It was so, I mentioned this before, it was so crazy, I didn't understand it. I'm, I'm Again, I'm on the West Coast. I'm looking at this skyscraper height, massive tidal wave. It's coming, 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 and dream's over. That's the way God dreams are, folks. Just, there's no mistake in what God is saying. And again, traumatic. But it, uh, it made no sense then until weeks later. Mere weeks, uh, maybe a month tops that I'm, I'm looking at Rush, a news report, folks. Credible, right? Okay, A news report of Putin out on the sea testing his new Poseidon nuclear torpedo. Imagine this. A nuclear bomb traveling through the sea undetected. It explodes, setting off a chain of radioactive waves. Kicking off a tsunami that could sweep an entire city. Leaving it uninhabitable for decades. This scenario is no longer just a figment of imagination. Russia is building this super weapon as we speak. It is called the Poseidon 2M39 torpedo. Reports say Russia is planning to carry out different tests of this missile this year. Russian President Vladimir Putin has asked for an update at key stages. At least three submarines tweaked to carry this torpedo are already undergoing tests in the Arctic. Reports say Putin wants to deploy the Poseidon in the Arctic by the summer of 2022. That nuclear torpedo is legit. In fact, according to the reports, by the ending of last year, Putin was going to have it done. Last year it would be completed. Russian television, which made it even far more credible that we know we were dealing with some hokey news report. Russian state Russian television was threatening the UK because they were angry, saying all we have to do is send our Poseidon, one Poseidon, maybe two, and all of the UK is going to be gone. That was Russian television, folks. So I began looking through the feed and trying to find more information on this. And I ran into another another video that was more descriptive, and I, I've already played it. I'll try to put that video up here for you, to where it was describing not only is the this tidal wave that this Poseidon bomb, nuclear bomb, which is supposed to be of such a great magnitude, I forget, I think it's either 50 megaton or 200, an insane amount megatons would create a tidal wave that's not only radioactive, but skyscraper height. 
torpedo that can be loaded onto and launched by a submarine. A Poseidon drone could also remain dormant in a box on the ocean floor just waiting for a signal to come back to life before carrying out its apocalyptic attack, like a reaper from Mass Effect. Either way, once a Poseidon is armed and activated, it can have a range of 10,000 kilometers, and it slowly travels across the ocean ominously towards its target over a period of weeks or even months. The drone travels so slowly in order to avoid detection, but when it's nearby an enemy coastline, it rushes ahead at over 100 miles per hour to get close enough to detonate its nuclear bomb before it's detected. The bomb that the Poseidon drone carries is allegedly the most powerful nuclear device ever created, capable of unleashing a completely insane 200 megatons of explosive power and all of it underwater. Unleashing that amount of raw power underwater is allegedly enough to generate a 500 meter high tsunami wave in the direction of an enemy's coastline. That wave would be so high that it's almost impossible to fully appreciate. So here is what the Empire State Building would look like right next to it. Well, what I thought was an insane god dream that had no logical rationale behind it how there's no scientific information how in the world would you have a skyscraper height tidal wave coming it doesn't make any sense but now it does and i'm telling you i saw it now some of you are thinking well steve a city sinking and these tidal waves how does that make any sense what's that got to do with the quake i have to i happen to agree there was a news report that I did, I did, and I was looking farther into this, and I've shown it before. This is science, folks, science, to where they have, and you can rationalize this out in your mind, and it'll make sense to you too. When you throw a lot of water into an area where there's a fault line, or there are faults, Folger says if rain percolates down far enough into a fault, the fault may become unclamped. The two sides are then free to slip past one another, causing an earthquake. I saw this, I believe, in when that tropical storm hit, just a matter of weeks ago, hit L.A. What happened? The minute it starts coming up on the coast of L.A., what happened when they... California had a 5.0 earthquake, folks. Some scientists wonder if all that rain could stress our earthquake faults and trigger a devastating quake. A research shows there may be a link between rain and earthquakes. Mm. California, up until, up until just now, I believe for the last decade, has been in an extreme drought. Are you following with me? California, according to to their information is no longer in a drought at all. So California now has a lot of water they're taken care of. All this extra weight has been added to California. Stay with me, folks. Is an earthquake going to happen anytime? No, 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 no. Hear me. I believe the Madrid goes first. I believe there'll be signs. I believe and am convinced because I've seen this and these things will happen. Folks, listen to me. The destruction of Babylon is not going to be prayed away. Once the 69 weeks even started, you can't even delay it. That's for, this is for another teaching. Don't, don't convince yourself that Babylon will not be destroyed. It's already wrote in the word of God. You can pray your way, navigate your way through it, but it's not going to be delayed if the 69 weeks are true, there is no delaying it and there is no praying it away. And for those of you that say, well, Babylon is in America. Listen to me, something I've taught it before, I'm not going to teach again. In Jeremiah 51 and 50, 50 and 51, three times actually, God is telling the residents of Babylon to get out. That Babylon is the same Babylon that's in Revelation. I did, I, did a, I did a teaching on it, one of the television shows. I showed scripture by scripture by scripture. They were the same verbatim, virtually verbatim. These scriptures are the same. And it came down to that Jeremiah's Babylon was the same Babylon in Revelation. Are you following with me? And when you understand that, you cannot say when you read Jeremiah that Israel, Zion, and Jerusalem are, even God is angry at Babylon. All of them are angry at Babylon. Don't let anybody tell you that Babylon is Jerusalem. Hello, I'll put that video for you here. 
Listen to me, folks. Jerusalem is not Babylon. Not if Jeremiah's Babylon is the same as the same as Revelations. It's, it's not going to happen. They're the same, and I show that they're the same. And then when you read Jeremiah, uh, well, uh, Israel, Jerusalem, and God, Zion, they're all angry what Babylon did to them. And that's our turning our back on them. So you can't have Babylon being Jerusalem. And it only leaves you with people who want to prophesy, what's the Vatican? I did a video on that. This, I, that's not for this teaching, folks. But I am trying to point out, you cannot delay the destruction that will be upon the United States. Now, piecing this back together, I'm going to tell you, first trumpet, first trumpet will, will initiate and cause the West Coast quake. It's going to cause a lot of, let me, let me show you, now we're going to start piecing this together, I'm going to start showing you how it works with other prophets. You're all aware, uh, if anybody, anybody's ever studied this, oh, I don't even remember exactly where, um, I believe it comes down through here, <laughs> I gotta love my drawing, right through here. That, this right here, is my rendition of the San Andreas, and how it goes down through here. And it splits in between Baja and Mexico. This is going to be, actually, it goes a little more like this, something like that. goes in kind of like that. Please don't critique me on my drawing, but I'm going to make this make sense to you. So there's your San Andreas. Let me give you a scenario that I know is going to happen. I'm telling you a tidal wave guaranteed for the West Coast. The only rational, logical possibility to create a tidal wave from what I saw and what apparently Russia has and has developed and apparently is probably even done by now I'm telling you at first trumpet that's going to be one of one of its assaults it's going to be out in the west coast and they're going to create a tidal wave what do you think is going to happen when you send a couple hundred foot high tidal wave upon the west coast concerning the water that's already there. According to the data, it's going to go minimum 20 miles in. According to what they're saying it'll do. If not go a couple hundred miles in of what they are saying this Poseidon can do. Can you imagine the amount of water that's going to hit? Just with that, what's going to happen along the San Andreas? Let me give you something else. I want you to consider this part. In fact, I'll probably have to dig up the video. I'm talking the one that changes the shape of California where everybody, you don't want to live in California, anywhere in California when that happens, or perhaps even on most of the, most of the West Coast, where an inland ocean is, is formed and, and uh, uh, Baja becomes an island and uh, the uh, the mouth of the inland ocean forms between san diego and los angeles do you think the shape of the united states is going to change simply because the madrid went the, the shape of the united states will change after that earthquake may i also say some renditions and even revelation says the great city is going to be divided <laughs> into three parts now that's before it's all said and done i don't believe it happens when the madrid goes but there are renditions and there are fault lines that so go somehow kind of like this that's my great water thing. And up here through the Great Lakes. There's your three parts. It has nothing to do with Jerusalem, folks. The great city, this is the great city. We're going to make America great again. Before it's all said and done, we're going to see it divided in three parts. However, I'm not saying it's going to happen yet. You can count on this, though. And this, I, well, I don't even want to even think about the Great Lakes back to the nuclear torpedo. That amount of water that's going to go in, according to John Paul Jackson's prophecy, he said there's going to be an inland ocean. San Diego down here, LA right here, you got, you got that being the mouth, of, the mouth of an inland ocean, according to him. Now, as I have shown you, scientifically, California is sinking. There is subsidence in California. According to NASA, some parts of the Central Valley are now sinking more than two inches a month. 
We saw that the area being affected by subsidence was enormous, stretching all the way from I-5 to 99, about 1,200 square miles were being affected by subsidence. That's an area the size of Rhode Island, and it is sunk permanently. Bakersfield's in here, Fresno's up here, Sacramento. This is, this is where he said an inland ocean is gonna go, between LA and San Diego. Okay, that's, that's what John Paul Jackson said. He said, well, this is, you're putting a lot of credibility in one person. Ah, I'm going to get to William Branham in a second. David Wilkerson said he saw at the quake there was such destruction, it wasn't even up towards this area, Washington and whatnot, Oregon. It wasn't even able to be navigated properly. Again, John Paul Jackson said, You don't want to live in California anywhere in California when that happens, or perhaps even on most of the, most of the West Coast. According to... John Paul, Baja becomes an island. Okay? How do you do that? How do you get Baja becoming an island? The water that's in here, at least on the, one, of the, one of the other sides of the fault line that goes right through here, right through Baja. I, my drawing's horrible, I'm sorry. I'm just telling you, the fault line goes right, right through and goes across Baja, if you want to look it up right across Baja and into, into California. So you're going to have water on this side where it already isn't on Baja. You're going to have to have a cover right across here to make Baja an island. And if you look at the fault line that goes, it does cross at the edge, of, at the top of uh, where it meets California. The fault line goes right into California. So what has happened has happened guaranteed you got sinkage going on or surrounding surrounding Baja now how did it go on again I'm going to say it went on into Mexico some why because of William Branham and it makes sense this is the only way you're going to get Arizona according uh, this is a prophecy that I mentioned quite some time ago that Danny Davis gave me he said uh, I forget the town I believe was in oh boy Tucson or, or Phoenix, he was in a church service, he was looking and he said he saw fish, sharks swimming in the church. And he prophesied that that church in Arizona would be underwater. Are you following with me? When you combine that, the Baja is going to at least become an island. How do you get water over here? There's, it's either going to come above above guaranteed above because i'm telling you it breaks off so you got it coming from here and you got it coming from here so now you got your arizona being covered i don't know how much of arizona i don't even remember where the church was it was, it was a prophecy that danny told me in fact you guys can probably look it up part of arizona is going to sink according to william branham and if you want to look at some of the data on online, they suggest it will too. And if you're going to make Baja an island, you now have this side of Mexico, part of it going and going into Arizona. Now you got part of Arizona being sunk. When you combine John Paul Jackson's Baja with William Branham's Arizona. Got it? It takes both to see why both exist. Or you can combine them and get a general overall. Now, I will tell you, online, the way, the way some of these renditions are, they got water going all the way into here. I mean, way out there. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm going to show you something else. It, again, one of my prophecies, something you're only going to hear here, something I believe you've only heard here, at least I was the first to say it. That's all I can tell you. Second trumpet is what? The third part of the sea becomes blood. Third part of the creatures which are in the sea that had life died. And a third part of the ships are destroyed. Let me give you the Pacific, the Gulf Coast, and the Atlantic. There's your three seas surrounding the United States or Babylon. We're talking a third part of the sea. This is going to be your third part right in here that's going to turn to blood. I need you folks to hear me. This is second trumpet. Now, those of you that understand the graph know that I've also said this happens with first trumpet. This is the attack on the United States. 
as I've shown in a video that I, I put back, initially put it in November of 2016, I explained the blood in the water and why the creatures which were in the sea that had life die. I've shown you the targets, the legitimate military targets that are in the Gulf Coast and what the blood is. Now, all these other trumpets are the result of the former. The second is a result of the first. The third is a result of the second. Watch what I mean. The second angel sounded. This is the second trumpet. And as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. A third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third part of the ships were destroyed. Now I've heard people say, this is a meteor going into the water. I've heard people say it's the Canary Islands going into the water. Technically, you could, if you had, if you had a meteor, it would destroy the ships. It would also destroy some creatures, with it being sea life, but it wouldn't be a third, neither by the Canary Islands or by meteor. Unless we're talking something bigger than a, you know, a bus being a meteorite, which we start doing that, we're going to be sent back to the, you know, to the Ice Age. That cannot be what's going to happen here. So a regular meteorite, asteroid, hitting, hitting the waters would kill within a couple mile radius, but that's it. Where you're losing me on either of these scenarios, you cannot create a third part of the sea to become blood. I don't care if you killed every living thing in the entire sea. You wouldn't even get a red tint out of it. So what is this blood? In wartime, military targets are going to be gas and oil rigs. Remember the BP oil spill? Do you remember the creatures or the sea life that it is still wreaking havoc on from that one measly oil rig? In the Gulf, there are hundreds of oil rigs. I assure you, if there has been a nuclear bombardment on us, anybody with half a brain is going to take out our oil refineries. And John saw this picture, though it looked a lot worse. This is from the BP oil spill. That is the only thing capable of turning the sea to blood and killing a third part of the creatures in the sea that have life to kill them. Obviously, a nuke going down is also going to take out the ships. Even though Second Trumpet happens a year later, at least that's the way it reads on the graph. I'm telling you, this is struck. Here's your oil rigs in here. They're struck at first trumpet, folks. They're hit at first trumpet. But that day when that target, these targets are hit, these oil rigs that are out there, legitimate military targets that are hit, when they get hit, it, the whole sea doesn't fill with blood in one day. It's going to take a year for it to be realized. And over the course of a year, this sea is going to begin to turn to blood. The creatures that are in the sea that have life are going to die. These, the ships are going to be destroyed, folks. Let me tell you something else. Here's your Madrid. Didn't John Paul Jackson say, watch, I'm taking a prophecy of what I'm giving and what he said, watch. The Mississippi is going to run backwards. It's going to run backwards. So what do you got? You got, first off, you got the ocean going in, right? Follow me, follow with me, folks. You got the ocean going in, into the Mississippi. Where does the Mississippi go? Well, the Mississippi goes all the way up into here, and I'm telling you, it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to break, folks. So you got ocean water going in up the Mississippi into the rivers that are go around the United States, right? Just look up your maps. The Mississippi doesn't just go up to the Great Lakes. Oh no, no, it filters throughout the United States. So you got ocean water going into rivers which is third trumpet, third trumpet a year later. This is going to take a little while to filter through. It's realized a year, a year later. Actually, so that's two years in is when you have your third trumpet according to the graph. Ocean water is going in, into the rivers of waters. They become polluted. Men can't drink them. They die. I'm going to tell you, you cannot drink seawater and you're going to die. You're going to dehydrate yourself even more, even though it may taste somewhat palatable when you're starving and dying of dehydration and thirst. So the fish are going to die off. And the rivers are going to be polluted along with the oil that's also going to go into these areas and the rivers. It's going to be a little combination of all of it, folks. 
you're I'm giving you stuff that's crazy I know and I'm sorry but I'm telling you that is the realization of first second and third trumpet now some of you are saying this is all impossible Steve this is never going to happen God loves America you're going to want to stick around this channel folks I got a word for you I've seen what's going to happen rationally I've seen a city sink I've seen the tidal wave that, that will provoke I'm telling you I know inwardly it will provoke it's going to provoke the west coast quake folks but that doesn't mean there won't be an earthquake tomorrow of 7.5 you know or, or next week or two weeks from now of some some magnitude you're going to see you're going to see the gulf coast looking like this and inward in as time goes on the rivers are going to become polluted i have a word which will also explain the atlantic i'm going to tell you this every listen to me this is this is this is this is a word even though i haven't seen this russia's going to put their poseidon over here too the Poseidon missile is going to hit over here as well. It's not just going to be here. Nukes down here in the middle of, of oil rigs and here. No, no, no. They'll do it here too. Every coastal shoreline, hear me. Every coastal shoreline is under judgment and shall be judged and be uninhabitable. Remember that I said this. Every coastal shoreline will be uninhabitable that surrounds Babylon. That is a prophecy that I'm giving you and I'm telling you it's by the Spirit. Now before I explain even more of that, I'm going to give you the two announcements real quick. I went into the... Uh, I had a couple scans after I did my radiation and my further chemo, which I walked, walked out on. Uh, scans, MRI, PET scan. I'm sorry, PET scan, CT scan was done. They show no cancer no activity of cancer whatsoever i guess i'm cancer free praise god for that the doctor who who told me i had six months to live if i didn't do what he said to do said he was rather shocked this that's that's a quote he was rather shocked and he should be I will do a video and I'll tell you guys in the future the things that worked for me, what didn't work, and how I navigated, even though God seemed so far off during my cancer period, which lasted two years. I still need prayer. I'm still recovering. I really need your prayers, folks. I'm still recovering. But I'll do a video on all things cancer in the future. I know many of you are touched in one way or the other by cancer in your family. Two, second announcement before I get to the revelation. We had offerings come in from new people who had never given before and other people who had continued to give still gave. And it paid the end of uh, last month, which I was questioning whether we were going to make it, uh, and a part of this month. Now, I want to thank every one of you, no matter how small you felt you gave. And I know it's, many of you, it was it meant the world. Like I can, You know what I've, I've noticed? Sometimes people are giving... Instead of just like $90, they give $91, 92. I'm just giving a, a figure, okay? When you do $91, I know you're really, this is really a type of offering that you're really working it out in your mind, 10% and that kind of thing. I want, I, want, I want to thank all of you. But as Elizabeth said, and it, it, is, it is true, uh, it took care of now. Hopefully you will continue to give. If you continue to give, I promise, not only will you relieve the burden, which I've been wanting to do, the, the, this should not be the responsibility of the raven, which stepped up, by the way. If you guys continue to give, I will go nowhere. It will take care of next month and so forth and so on, and the burdens can be relieved, and I will put down below every now and then. I don't want to talk about this finance thing anymore. I don't want to talk about it ever again. And I will not talk about it. I will just put down below offerings and where to give and how to give. That's what I'll do. And, and, and it's in your hands, folks. It's in your hands. You continue to give. We're here. If not, then, then it stops. And that's what almost did. Now, to the next revelation. So, in other words, if you read what a nuclear winter is all about, I saw that. 
you know. And that appears to be which we discussed. That appears to be what you were seeing. And, yeah. and how far down? I'm just curious how far down in Florida were we? Were you seeing snow? Yeah. Because simply going to say that the, 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 the snows in Florida now. No, but, to but the, how I'm talking about to Miami. In other words, there's, there's I'm, I'm seeing the coast of of, of uh, the southern coast of Florida with ice in the water, uh, tides at four or five, ten times bigger than they should be crashing against and snow coming down like you're in Colorado. That is a description of what it means in Marvel, <laughs> that the waves and the sea are going to be roaring. Danny saw it. Now I'm going to give you that video, I believe that television show, that behind the scenes soon. In the next couple of videos, you'll see it. You're not going to want to miss it because I'm going to tell you it goes against every bit of doctrine you believe or that we've been taught. It doesn't make sense. It flies in the face of, of mainstream doctrine. Doesn't make sense. And yet that's what he saw. So you're either call the man a liar or this is going to happen and you're not going to have your mark. You're not going to have your grid. There's going to be chaos and destruction coast to coast, folks. Look for more to come. Until next time, take care and God bless.